This video is sponsored by Brilliant. So remember when we were all worried about Clearview AI, that shady facial recognition company that was scraping social media websites in violation of their privacy policies for our images without anyone's permission and actually got sued by the state of Illinois for that and was selling access to law enforcement who were using it to potentially identify criminals, except there were several cases of, in particular, people of color being misidentified and arrested because of it. Yeah, so it turns out that you can actually do that yourself for free. PimEyes is a facial recognition search website that allows you to upload an image of, in theory, yourself, but in reality, anyone, and search for any facial recognition match to the person in that image. And it's actually been around since 2017, although it was recently acquired by some other entity in 2020 and has since gone through a rather significant rebrand. Originally, PimEyes was a website where you could upload any photo. In fact, a screenshot from 2018 shows it saying that you can upload anyone you want. But when they were acquired by this mysterious company, which we'll talk about in a sec, they rebranded as a company designed to help us protect our personal privacy by being able to track when our faces show up on the internet. They seem to be based out of Poland, but CNN Business actually did a whole in-depth article on this, which I'd highly recommend checking out if you want to read more details on the company. And one of the things that they did was reach out to the company to see who they were, and the company declined to say. So that's reassuring. But unlike Clearview AI, it does not scrape social media, or at least it claims to not scrape social media, and instead uses publicly available images that are hosted on websites that allow people to index their images. Importantly, after a lot of media coverage due to concerns around people using it for stalking, they've also come out and said that it doesn't actually reveal the identity of the person in the image, which is kind of BS, and you'll see why in a minute. So you can use PayMize for free, but if you purchase an individual subscription, which is about $30 a month, you can search for more things, and you can also put alerts for specific faces. So of course, I had to try a subscription to get the full package. So here is their landing page. You can either take a photo using the webcam on your computer or you can upload your own photo, which is what I did. At first I tried a photo of me wearing my glasses. I'll go on to try one not wearing my glasses just to see how well they do. And to use it, you have to accept the terms and conditions. You see that it says you're claiming to use your own face or an image of your own face in this, but it's a lot of this is based on the honor system. And as you can see, there are a lot of results that match my face. And I think it's important to say here that as a person who exists publicly on the internet, it doesn't surprise me that there are a lot of images of myself. And in fact, I expected to have seen and likely uploaded myself most of the images that I would find through PimEyes. However, there were a couple images that I didn't know existed on the internet. One of them is from this tutoring website that I apparently tutor for. I don't. I would believe that I signed up to do so at one point, but they're still using my photo on their website even though I definitely don't work for them, so that's cool. There are also some weirder examples like this Instagram thing. I don't know exactly what this is or whether it was an image that used to be on here and isn't on there anymore. I don't know what's going on there. And here's a photo that I didn't actually know was taken in the first place. So I both did not upload this, but also didn't know that it existed. And that was definitely the interesting part of this. So this is a photo from a gala that I went to a few years ago for a nonprofit that my dad is involved in. And I had no idea this picture was being taken. And apparently someone uploaded it to the internet and it exists there. Now, importantly, one of the claims of PimEyes is that by using their service, you can't actually associate anyone's identity with the image that you're uploading or the images that you find, but clearly that's not necessarily true because you can go to the website associated with any of these images and pretty easily figure out, especially if you're someone who exists on the internet in the form of social media or your own corporate websites, who they are. Here's another example of a photo that I think I do know exists, but don't know why it's here. This is from college when we went to Niagara Falls. Also in this photo is Red Abebe, who's a new CS professor at UC Berkeley and is an amazing researcher in algorithmic fairness. So 
check her out, she's great. And then as you get further into the results, they show you a separate section of results that they are less confident match your face. And so in my experience, these generally weren't me. They tended to be random people who look vaguely like me, um, also a lot of porn. But it was nice to see that there was at least an indication of how confident they were that the face and the image actually matched me and that they separated out by faces that they were pretty sure and faces that they weren't. Having said that, I did actually still find a couple of examples of people who were in the high confidence section who were not me. So this is a great example of how even if you have an algorithm that's fairly accurate, in fact, in the interview with CNN Business, they say that their algorithm is about 90% accurate in terms of facial recognition, you can still get misidentifications pretty easily. So next I tried a photo of me without glasses just to see whether or not it made a difference. And from what I can tell, it really didn't. I think that the order of images tended to trend more with the hairstyle that I had in an image than with whether I was wearing glasses or not. So images of my hair and ponytails were higher up and images with my hair out like this were lower down, but the same set of images showed up. All right, so after going through this, my next question was how this compares to something like Google reverse image search. And if you didn't already know, you can actually upload pictures to Google image search and Google will show you results of pictures that are similar to that. Importantly, reverse image search isn't a facial recognition system, so it's not looking for facial features and matching them. It's just looking at the photo overall and categorizing it with photos that are similar based on the categorization that it uses via the computer vision API. And so as you can see, it's looking for images of people with curly hair, like my own, uh, but isn't necessarily looking at images of me. So none of the people in any of these pictures are me. And this is all to say that when it comes to identifying people correctly, sites like PemEyes are a huge step up from anything like reverse image search and can do a much better job of linking random photos of people, whether it be a suspect that you're looking for in a criminal case or a random person that you took a photo of on the street to their actual identity. And this circles back to the concerns about stalking that came from predominantly women in the media. And PIMIS's response that they A, have a privacy policy that says that you can't use it for that, and B, have designed it as a tool so that women can actually have more ownership and more autonomy over how their images are posted on the internet. And I think that this is an interesting claim because A, no one reads the privacy policy, and B, even people who do read the privacy policy probably violate the privacy policy. So the entire thing kind of runs on the honor system. In fact, with the individual subscription, you can track up to 25 different faces and get alerts for whenever a new image with that face is posted. So clearly it's designed to track more than just you. At the same time though, I think it can be useful if you are concerned about someone posting an image of you without your permission, things like revenge porn come to mind, because you can upload an image of yourself and see whether or not that exists on the internet and then do your best to get it removed or at least know that it exists instead of having it surprise you during something like a job interview. In fact, PimEyes was actually a resource used by a lot of people, including investigative journalists, to track down people who were present at the January 6th Capitol riot. But at the end of the day, at least for me, PimEyes does feel like one of those tools that is well-intentioned or is marketed as well-intentioned, but doesn't necessarily acknowledge the fact that it can be used for malicious purposes. Things like Apple AirTags are another example of that, where it turns out that you might be able to stalk people via their AirTags, just like you could stalk them via PimEyes. And while it is nice that it gives people the ability to track their online presence and know if something bad has been posted about them, it would also be nice to see some ways to prevent those things from happening in the first place and install some safeguards that make sure that systems like this aren't abused. But these are just ideas and based on some of the comments that you guys have left on other videos, you might be wondering how you can develop real world machine learning systems that solve useful problems without compromising things like personal privacy. So what should you do? Well, you're already watching this video on YouTube, which is a great start, but in order to really learn something, you have to do it. Brilliant is a website and app built off this very principle. You learn best while doing and solving in real time. Jump right into solving problems and be coached bit by bit until before you realize it, you've learned a new subject in STEM. You won't have to memorize long messy formulas and endless facts. Just pick a course you're interested in and get started. 
feeling stuck or made a mistake, you can read the explanations to find out more and learn at your own pace. Brilliant has something for everybody. Whether you want to start at the basics of math, science, and computer science, or dive into cutting edge topics like cryptocurrency or neural networks. Personally, I've been using Brilliant to learn a little more about cryptocurrency so that I can better understand what is happening with Dogecoin and NFTs. So if you'd like to join me in a community of 8 million learners and educators today, sign up for free at brilliant.org slash Jordan or click on the link in the description. In fact, the first 200 people to go to that link will also get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Otherwise, if you like this video, then let me know by smashing the like button and subscribing to my channel. You can also check out the video that I did on Clearview AI if you haven't seen that already to get a background on what's going on in the realm of facial recognition. Otherwise, if you want to follow my PhD life, you can do so on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and via my Substack newsletter, and I will see you on Monday. Bye!